Saturday morning at the farm. Well, everyone, it's your favorite rock star, Benny Afro, and I'd like to say a shout out to uh, Sports Scene We Can Turn Up and to Adidas Originals for the drip. And yeah, man. So, uh, Benny Afro is a small town boy. Um, I grew up in, uh, I was born in a small town uh, called Middleburg, it's in Bumalanga, and then I uh, later moved to another small town called Burgers Fort, that's in Limpopo. And um, yeah, man, I've been around music all my life. Uh, my dad is a bass guitarist, or was, he doesn't play as much anymore. Um, yeah, just growing around, like, you know, those rehearsals and people just, you know, in the house, rehearsing, making music. I guess, like, it, it got to me because it wasn't until, like, you know, in my early teens that I decided, you know what? This stuff is actually really cool and I want to become a part of it. So that's more or less the Benny Afro story. I think I was influenced by, you know, the different kind of artists that I grew up listening to. Like I said, I, I grew up where the 90s and the 80s music was really hot and that's all they played in the house. And that's all like, you know, the sound, that's the sound that really like had me interested in making music. So I think anyone from, you know, the Motown guys, your Manhattans, your the Spinners, the Jackson Fives, your Brenda Fassies, Lucky Dubes, everybody that was popping at the time had a huge influence on the Benny Afro sound. Um, obviously, you know, as I grew older, I started, you know, having my own taste, listening to the hip hop, your Tupacs, and up till now. So that's why I, I'm always, you know, um, I never want to say like Benny Afro falls under this specific genre because I was influenced so, by so many different sounds that I really do find special. So yeah, that's where like my sound come from, comes from. I mean like just different sounds coming together. Um, I, was, I was influenced by a whole lot of producers. Like I, I was a house producer for the longest time. Um, so I was around guys like your DJ Kunis, he was one of my closest guys that I worked with, your know, George Lacosta, like a whole lot of the house guys. And um, yeah, man, just being around them and, and listening to them put the music together, you know, along with other guys who were producers at the time. And um, for me as a producer, I started also having, developing my own sound. Like I always say, like, for me, I've always wanted to be a producer, someone that's making music from the back, you know? And then I'd have artists come into studio and I'd be like, uh, it doesn't quite. And until the day that I decided, you know what, let me try this. Then I hopped on the mic and I was like, it's not so bad. And that's when I discovered Benny Afro as the artist that he is today. And um, yeah. It's, it's, it's always with, with every song that I do, I feel the same. So with the recent song I did with King Monada, it was, it was like way out of my, I never thought I'd make a song like that. And then when we got into studio, did the song, it worked out. When we did this feeling with Ami Faku, it was a different sound for me because, you know, Ami is a different artist. And when we got in there and we were like, let's try this, let's try this, it worked out. I felt like that. So every time I work with, with, with someone out of, outside of my box, I feel like, wow. Take a shower for me. Oh, I think previously I've had songs where I felt like, um, that I listen to and I feel like, oh, I could have added this and I could have added that. But at the time, the one thing that was stopping me from, you know, adding those sounds or adding those elements was the fact that I wanted to be, you know, I wanted the music to be from this genre. Like I wanted it to be hip hop. I wanted it to be house music. I wanted it to be pop. And where, where I'm at right now, it's not about that anymore. And that's, that's, that's why I'm loving it so much because I'm able to have a song and say, Zuchi would sound dope on this, and say, King Monado would sound dope on this, or ha have Ami. Those are different people from different other genres, you know? I, I, I always believe that, you know, honest music connects, and, and if it's not genuine, someone, so, someone out there is gonna feel that it's, it's not genuine. So I always write songs from, from experiences or, or you know, things that I'm going through at the time. And then I'd have a, if I have a sad song and I need to collaborate, I'll be like, hmm, who makes sad music? And if I'm making a happy song, I'm, I'm probably gonna look who makes happy music. And then I don't really depend on the collaboration to give me the vibe of the song. I, it needs to come from within for me. So yeah, that's, that's usually how most of my songs come about. Give you all I can for your love. So when we were making grocery store, I had Zuchi send me the, the beat and it had his 
hook already on it. And I was, I was listening to it and I was like, this is, this is kind of different. And then um, it was one night I was coming from the club and I, I was seeing things that were happening. I was like, this actually fits with the narrative of the whole song. So I got into the studio and I tried it, I sent it to Zuchi and he's like, this is crazy. Who else are we gonna get on this? And then uh, we said, okay, let's, let's try something also, you know, mellow, but still within the... And then we hit up Manuel Star, and then he came in the studio and he just killed it. I mean, Double D and them were crazy, man. It, it, it was a crazy collaboration. I don't think it's one of those that will probably never happen again. So when, we were, when we were making this feeling, um, we had Lasty, Lasty is Nasty C's producer. And we were at Ami's place and he was playing us, you know, a couple of beats, just playing beats, playing beats. And then we came across this one beat that just took us back. We're like, this is like 80s, 90s. I'm like, yo, this is really dope. And then Ami's like, this is really dope. Let's try something. Put on the mic, put on everything. And then I started writing to the song, writing, writing, writing. I wrote a bit of the hook and and as I was recording and then I'm waiting for Ami now to come on and working with Ami is the craziest thing because she's a, a crazy person. Ami will chill, she's so playful, she's on the carpet, she's not taking the song serious. I'm getting pissed, I'm like, yo, let's work. And then she's okay, she's like, okay, I'm coming. Then she comes through, she goes to the mic and she nails it. We having fun tonight. So with Diawa, I just really wanted to take it back to they take it back to my people back in Limpopo, man. Like, you know, mm. and I had a um, 80s, 90s sample ringing in my head. It's, it was from a band called Cheek to Cheek, a South African band from the 80s, 90s. Um, and then I called Scales in studio to come work on something, you know, like, you know, along the, the sample that I had. And then I, I had this, you know, this Mahotella Queens thing that they had. This, this, you know, they used to have these other backing vocal vocals that just come in and they go. Then I had this, and then it kept on coming and going, coming and going. And then I had this, you know, this vibe about just chill, chill out vibes, man. It's Saturday, we're chilling. Saturday morning at the bar. We had that vibe. And then uh, I recorded it and it didn't sound right. So I told Scales, I got depressed. I said, man, go home. And then Scales calls me later that night. He's like, yeah, I found it out. It, it's the baseline. It wasn't working. I changed it. And then he sent me a sample. I was like, this is it. And I've always wanted to make a song that'll, you know, connect with the people, you know? Um, and I'm glad that the song is doing that because the first day it dropped, I walked into, you know, I, I was online on Facebook and then I, I saw this group of just, people sharing the music on their whatsapps and they're just saying send me send me you gotta bring me back to life fashion side i feel like i've always it's so close to the so close knit to the music that i can't really separate it because um when i was growing up listening to all these guys cool in the gang the manhattans jackson fives all these people they all had like a specific special look that i also liked and i've always been saying to myself when i grow up I want to sound as cool, but I also want to look just as cool. And um, that made me want to, you know, dig more into finding my own brand and identity in terms of what I look like. And that's where the fashion inspiration came in. And I just kept on going and going and wearing like, you know, bizarre things. I, I like what Ricky does. Um, Malum Cool Cat is also dope at that. Um, yeah, basically, I just I just love artists who aren't who aren't afraid to say, you know what, I'm gonna put on a towel today and rock it with a chain and go out there. I love that. Oh, would you really die for me? Yeah, Don't be afraid of standing out. Don't be afraid of being judged. Um, do you like just go in and do you and always? And if you do you you are able to, you know, especially as an artist, you're able to actually sell something that people need. Sometimes people need something, but they don't know it. But when they see it, they're like, oh, I need this. And that's, that's where originality, that's where you're able to eat from being original. Because people see something and be like, this is dope. I needed this, you know? But if it's all the same, then it's all like, it's so easy to walk past it. Die for me, die for me. 
Put your whole body on fire. Yo, this is Benny Afro, and you can catch me on socials. It's at Benny Afro on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Afro with an E at the end. If you don't have the E, it's not me. And um, yeah, love you all. <laughs> you call me baby, hello, hello, baby.